Adding color to your line art can be a nice finishing touch to your artwork. So I'm going to show you three simple ways that you can do this yourself. I'm going to start with the easiest one and we're going into more advanced techniques later in this video. But first, I want to make sure that your line art is in normal blend mode with transparency and separated for all of these techniques to work. If you already know how to separate your lines from white paper, there's a timestamp that you can skip on the timeline of this video. If you have, for example, scanned in a pencil drawing, you can separate the lines by first copying the entire canvas. And you can do that by going into this wrench icon, go into this plus, where the add tab is and here you can see copy canvas. Just press this and this will copy everything that is visible at this time on your canvas. After you have copied your canvas, go into the layer menu and create a new empty layer by pressing the plus icon. Then fill this layer with color and you can do that by just dragging any color that you like onto your canvas and just fill it in. Now let's go back into the layer menu and we're not gonna need this line art anymore so I'm going to disable the visibility of it. Select the layer that you just created, tap it once and you will see this mask option. Press it once to add a layer mask. Make sure that your layer mask is selected. It will appear darker shade of blue than the layer itself. If you have the layer itself selected, it will look like this. So select the layer mask. This is important. And then go back into the wrench icon and in the add tab of items, we are going to hit paste. And this is going to paste that canvas that we copied earlier. Now we have our line art on the layer mask, but we need to invert it so that we have all of this color inside the lines, not outside of it. So we can do that by just opening the layer menu, press the layer mask once, and just select invert. This will invert the colors there. And now we have line art that is colored. So I'm just going to squeeze these two together. And that way we have this layer that has color on line art and it has transparency. Now that we have the lines in normal blend mode with transparency, all we have to do is tap the layer and choose alpha lock if we want to edit the colors of this layer. This will lock all possible edits within the visible pixels on this layer. So here I am painting on this layer new colors to color the lines again with a different color. And I don't have to worry about different selections or going over the lines. So I don't have to keep redrawing the entire thing twice if I want to make edits. This is a very simple way to edit the colors if you're not happy with them. Usually when I add colors to my own line art, I tend to do it near the end of the whole process. In most cases, the lines are kind of small compared to the whole illustration. So I tend to leave the colors near the end of the whole process, but not always. You'll see another approach in the last example in this video. One trick that I like to use is to color the lines so that they're fitting with the rest of the colors in the piece. To use this technique, it's better to finish most of the colors until you're close to the final look of the piece. To do this process, turn off the visibility of your line art. We could just copy this layer, but you probably have tons of different layers at this point. So it's better that we use this same technique that we go into French icon, add and copy canvas. You don't always see this paste option for some reason. So if your paste is grayed out, just go outside of that menu first and then open it again and it should be visible there and just hit paste. Now we are going to open the layer menu and with the line art that you have created on that separate layer, just tap that layer that has your separated normal blend mode line art on it and then hit select. This will select all of the line art. Now go back into the layers and with the selections on Tap this new layer that you just created and then add a layer mask to it. This will create a layer mask out of your selection, which is basically the line art. This layer mask we are not going to invert, so it should look quite dark and all the white lines in your layer mask, those are the lines that are visible on this layer. Now select the canvas itself, not the layer mask. 
Let's open the adjustments panel here and then add Gaussian blur. And just drag your stylus until you have a little bit of Gaussian blur. As you can see, now all the lines are colored by their surroundings. So basically this makes all of the lines kind of fade in in a very soft manner. After you have done this Gaussian blur, you can go into the adjustments panel again and then just select hue, saturation and brightness. And here we can turn down the brightness until we have visibility of those lines. But these aren't black lines, these are colored but darker lines. And then you can play around with saturation until you find something that works for your illustration. And then when you're happy with your colors, you can just open the menu again and pinch these two together, like so. Now with this method, you have lines that are colored everywhere, but they are colored according to your artwork. By the way, I use this trick almost every time that I have line art that I have done with pencil on paper. It just saves so much time that if there's some individual tweaks that I want to make to it, I can separate that manual work to those areas. But this tends to leave quite a nice impression and kind of tie in the digital and the traditional together when I'm working with those combinations. The last method is a combination of all of the techniques that we have talked about up to this point. And this method is something that I use myself in almost all of the cases where I have line art in my illustrations. So I use this Gaussian blur basically as a starting point to start coloring the line art of my illustrations. Then I create a new layer by pressing this plus icon. Then by pressing this empty layer, I set it as a clipping mask by pressing this text right here. On this clipping mask, I can paint with a very large brush any edits or tweaks that I feel like making to the colors that just didn't look right with this Gaussian blur. The Gaussian blur can be a good starting point, but it doesn't know what the image looks like and it cannot emphasize areas that I, as an artist, want to emphasize. So for example, if I want to make the eye darker and the Gaussian blur has kind of washed it out of visibility, I can do that manually here. And I don't have to worry about going over the lines when I'm working on a clipping mask. In this illustration, the lines are done with this super thick line art brush and the lines are so wide that I want to use all of that space as an opportunity to communicate light, shadow, or sometimes I use my lines as an opportunity for decorative elements. This method isn't technically more difficult than the previous ones, but artistically it can be a lot more challenging because now you have all these new choices that you get to deal with or options that give you more creative freedom with your illustration. The way you go about those choices is of course up to your own personal style. To give you a more concrete idea of what I did might not work as a guide on how you should use this method, but I hope that this can highlight some kind of visual problem solving that I went through in this process. So here are my finished colors for this line art. So the way that I made color choices in these bigger objects, like for example the moon or the bird here, I try to make the lines visible. I try not to kind of hide them with colors. So to make sure that the lines are still visible, I try to make sure that the line has enough either value or hue contrast with what is inside the lines and what is outside the lines as background. This way I can also highlight elements that I think need more visibility. So where I want to have more contrast, I know that people will probably be looking at those areas that have the highest points of contrast. Of course, this is not an exact science, but I try to stay consistent with that rule where it matters for me. There are also changes to the hue on the surface of the bird. And this is something that I've really struggled with because I felt like an abrupt change in color that just drew attention to areas that weren't that important to draw attention to. And after a lot of changes, I came up with this idea. So when I'm changing the color of the line art, as you can see here, it is aligning with the shadow. So the change in color on the surface kind of hides that change of color in the line art. 
so it is not that abrupt like for example here the angle changes so I use that as an excuse to kind of fade into this uh, green color in the line art and the same with the tail so I colored the tail with different colors depending on the angle of the tail do birds have tails they, they are tail feathers they're tails I was happy with this solution because I think this way those hue changes don't really draw as much attention and in some areas they can even help the lights to create a stronger mood. The last part is probably the strangest addition and that is these uh, small pastel rainbow gradients that are happening around the flowers of this tree. I thought that the flower radiating this sort of a rainbow pastel set of lines that can serve as a small clue that these other smaller flowers, they are going to be rainbow stars someday as well. But they are not yet there, so that is just one way for me to tell this story. In this idea, I think there is this like little bit of optimism that even though there is only one blooming rainbow star on this tree, that these other ones are going to be like bright rainbow stars in the future as well. There's just something like really optimistic about that that got me excited and I think that's the reason why I felt so enthusiastic about it. I hope that this has given you some ideas on different ways to approach coloring your lines. Not just for decorative purposes, but when lines are an important part of your piece, their colors can also support the mood or message of your illustration. If you want to use this same line art brush that I used, you can get it for free by following the instructions in this video. For channel members, you can also see the full uncut process video for this piece. It also has a 30 minute narration of the composition and other techniques. I'm Mikko and I'll see you in the next video.